Today is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and as usual, you're going to have people perverting his legacy for their own purposes today. Uh, oftentimes, people on the right pretend like he agreed with them. They'll say he's a Republican. He wasn't. Uh, and furthermore, whenever people make that point to begin with, whether it's the Martin Luther King Jr. was a Republican point or the, the Democrats birthed the KKK point, what's the main thing they don't tell you? They don't tell you that the political parties switched at one point in American history. Okay, so the Democrats in the South, that was the conservative party back then. So you're not helping yourself. You're saying that those were the, the Republicans, basically. You're saying that those were the conservatives, okay? When you say Southern Democrats were racist, yeah, that was the conservative party then. So all those people uh, are now on your side in the Republican Party because the parties flip. They never tell you that part, but they love to say stuff like, yeah, the Democrats were the party of the KKK. So um, there's going to be a lot of that today. And what I want to do is break down the real MLK for you. Uh, now, of course, you already know that he's a hero when it comes to desegregation and civil rights and voting rights. But there are other issues that uh, he fought for which have been actively buried. So first, let's go to health care and see what he had to say about that. Quote, of all the forms of inequality, injustice in health care is the most shocking and inhumane. Okay, um... That seems pretty clear to me. I wonder what political candidate today best embodies that philosophy. I wonder what kind of system would best uh, embody that philosophy. Without question, single payer or Medicare for all. Uh, there was Before I continue here, let me just throw out there, one of the articles I was reading earlier about this uh, said that MLK even described himself as a democratic socialist. Who else describes themselves as that today? Hmm. Let's think about that one. All right, so let me give you some more here. On a living wage, he said, quote, Anything less than $2 an hour fails to give all Americans a decent standard of living. Uh, now, in today's dollars, I should tell you that that's equal to about $15 an hour. So, back then, he was saying... We got to do a living wage and we got to tie it to inflation and we got to make it so that if you work a full time job, you're able to survive and afford basic necessities. That's not a radical idea. The radical idea would be the opposite of that. The radical idea is what we have right now. And yet again, I pose a question to you guys. Hmm, which candidate is it running today that best embodies that philosophy? Can't figure it out. All right, now on the issue of unionization, he said, quote, We must guard against being fooled by false slogans such as right to work. Its purpose is to destroy labor unions and the freedom of collective bargaining by which unions have improved wages and working conditions of everyone. Wherever these laws have been passed, wages are lower, job opportunities are fewer, and there are no civil rights. We do not intend to let them do this to us. Yet again, that's incredibly poignant, and it, it's still relevant today. We have all these so-called right-to-work states that are passing these kinds of laws, and effectively, what are they really saying? It's right-to-work for less. That's what it is. Because on average, these states, uh, people make $1,500 less and have worse benefits. That's o over the course of a year, $1,500 less. So it's not an open question. We know that unionization is better for the middle class. And here's MLK in his time saying, yeah, of course, we got to do more unionization and we got to avoid the nonsense uh, from the elitists when they say we got to do uh, right to work because they're just fooling you. It's that simple. They're tricking you into thinking the union is against you when in reality the businessmen and, and the elitist class are against you and the union would help you. Okay, and finally, let me give you here on militarism. He said, American involvement in Vietnam, quote, has torn up the Geneva Accord and strengthened the military-industrial complex. And he also accused the U.S. of being the greatest purveyor of violence in the world. Damn. So, 
keep everything in perspective here and understand that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., it's not like the only thing he cared about and fought for was uh, civil rights and voting rights and things of that nature. It's not like he was limited to race issues. He was brilliant on that front, and we all acknowledge that, and that's the history of him that we learn. But also in other areas, oh my God, there's still so much to do in terms of upholding his legacy and fighting for his vision. And is he correct in his vision? I would say absolutely he's correct in his vision. And on virtually every single issue, there's also quotes of him supporting Planned Parenthood at the time and uh, reproductive rights. And when it comes to foreign policy, what, you think he would look at our 900 military bases around the world, the trillions of dollars we wasted in Iraq attacking the wrong country which did not attack us? You think he would look at this and say, oh no, totally, I'm with, uh, uh, I'm with the military industrial complex, I'm with the defense contractors. Absolutely not. So just understand, it, you know, we have this ability to look back and say, look through rosy glasses and say, well now we obviously all realize this guy was a hero. At the time, there was vicious opposition to him. Vicious opposition. There was a quote from Lyndon Johnson, who signed the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act. When he spoke out against uh, Vietnam, Lyndon Johnson called him, quote, a nigger preacher. So we had this ability to look back and say, well, obviously now we all agree. Martin Luther King Jr. was the right guy. We all agree. We all agree. Understand, at the time, he faced massive opposition. It was not a given that he was going to win. So today, when you stand up and say, we got to stop militarism, we got to stop U.S. imperialism, we got to stop the military industrial complex, you're going to get a whole bunch of shit thrown at you, man. They're going to call you all kinds of names. They're going to tell you, you don't understand. There are big problems in the world and we got to police the world. We got to do this. We got to do that. When you talk about getting a living wage and tying it to inflation, they're going to tell you, oh my God, you don't understand how economics works. It, you know, there's going to lead to inflation and this and that, blah, 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 blah. They're going to throw the book at you. They're going to treat you like a buffoon. They're going to say that you're on the wrong side of history. That's exactly what they said to him in his time. So keep fighting. Keep fighting. Eventually we win. And then 40 years, 50 years, 60 years down the road, they look back and go, that was obvious. I can't believe anybody would, argue, would have argued against those people. They were obviously telling the truth. So this is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy. It's one we should all uphold and fight for because that's what he would want us to do, and he's right.